Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 6 January 2018. I am Saganandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about the company, me, or more importantly, how it can help in your trading, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we will look at key commodities. Those tend to impact related stocks. We will look at oil and gold using technical charts. Rising tide lifts all boats. When the broad market goes up, it tends to take all the stocks with it. We study market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and also multiple broad market ETFs using technical charts to assess the direction of the broad market. When we trade with industry strength, that adds more conviction and edges to the trades. We study industry strength and rotation using industry scorecard and heat map table. We will do that this week also. Along the way, we may go through some of the trades posted in QTraders forum and certainly look for trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. This week can be described as the week when everything that we study went up. That includes US oil, gold and the broad market ETFs. We start with US oil. We are looking at US oil using weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. In the weekly chart, US oil went up strongly. It is above upper boundary. It has a bullish shape candle and also the backdrop candle color is bullish. In daily chart, US oil was in a sideways range earlier. It broke out of that range and then continued to move higher. Because it didn't pull back in the middle, it didn't give us any low risk entry opportunity. At the right edge, it is overextended above the upper boundary. So we don't have any low risk entry point in US oil right now. We now study gold. In weekly chart, gold has given us three successive bullish candles. Backdrop candle color is cyan. This week's candle has upper tail and lower tail both. The body is hollow, so it is somewhat indecisive. That indecisiveness is clear in the daily chart also. For the four days of this week, Monday was market holiday, it didn't go up much. Of course, on Monday, it gapped up and then went up further. After that, it moved somewhat sideways while the broad market ETFs went up, including S&P 500. That is reflected in the 
relative performance tilting downward. Gold went up straight from the lower boundary to upper boundary and further beyond it. These are moves we call wild moves. It didn't pull back in the middle, therefore we didn't have any low risk entry opportunity in gold. At the right edge also it is far above upper boundary and there is no low risk entry opportunity. After studying these two commodities, let's look at broad market breadth. Every week we study market breadth using NASDAQ Composite Index and NYSE Composite Index weekly charts. Other than the indices themselves, we study three pairs of internals, new high lows, advanced decline and up-down volume. In terms of the indices, NASDAQ had a very big up move. It easily crossed the high of the candle displaying bearish headwind that came two weeks ago. That bearish headwind signal didn't result in any meaningful drop. And now price has reversed strongly upward. For last two weeks, NASDAQ was underperforming NYSE. This week, it outperformed NYSE. NASDAQ is in clear uptrend and so is NYSE. There was no pullback in NYSE for last two weeks. It continues to go up and this week it went up further. Both NYSE and NASDAQ are overbought. NYSE is overbought for many weeks now. So both NASDAQ and NYSE continues to be in uptrend and the uptrend got stronger this week. If we look at the internals, the new high lows went up, advanced decline also went up and up down volumes also went up. The new high lows went up most significantly. That has been a pattern for quite a few weeks. It shows that the stocks which were stronger for long time are continuing to go up. Those are probably fueling the rally more than the stocks that were lagging. All the six internals went up and all the six closed above zero. Over longer period, the internals are still not able to surpass previous peaks. In summary, we may conclude that the broad market is clearly bullish. No doubt about that, it got stronger this week. Internals continue to be weak, though market made new all-time highs, the internals couldn't surpass previous peaks. And for this specific week, internals are clearly strong. The market breadth shows a strong market this way. Let us see if that is reflected in the broad market ETFs. We are looking at SPY using at a glance template weekly chart on the left side and daily chart on the right side. We call this at a glance template because using this template we can decide whether there is a low risk entry opportunity at the right edge of the chart in less than one minute. In the weekly SPY strongly went up. It opened the week at the low and closed at the very top. Candle shape is very bullish and the color is also bullish. Weekly activity is high though not very or 
extreme high. In Delhi, SPY had displayed multiple bearish headwind signals. Now it has surpassed the high of both of them. It closed well above the upper boundary line. So there is no low risk entry opportunity right now. If SPY was to pull back maybe to this price level and then tilt upward that might give us a low risk entry opportunity. Such low risk entry opportunities are becoming elusive in recent weeks in all the broad market ETFs. Let's look at QQQ. QQQ had displayed a bearish headwind signal in the weekly chart just like NASDAQ broad market index had displayed it. This week it easily crossed above the high of that candle. The candle shape and color both are strongly bullish. Though QQQ outperformed SPY this week, weekly activity is more muted in QQQ than SPY. In daily chart, QQQ closed above upper boundary. Again, that is too overextended and there is no low risk entry point right now. Like SPY, if it pulls back little bit and goes up, it may give us a low risk entry opportunity. Daya also went up strongly in the weekly chart. Activity was heavy, similar to SPY. In daily, like the other two ETFs, it is above upper boundary and there is no low risk entry point right now. The last of the four ETFs that we study, IWM, it also displayed a weekly bearish headwind few weeks ago. It couldn't pass the high of that so far. This week went up. The candle shape is bullish. Color is also bullish. Activity is low. The relative performance clearly shows that IWM is underperforming the broad market. In daily chart, the same underperformance is shown by sideways move, at least of the tops. The lows are slowly going up. However, the tops are remaining at the same level. There is no long entry opportunity because it is not in clear uptrend and it is supported by multiple memory trend lines. So we are not going to take any short trade either. From these four broad market ETFs, we don't see any immediate trade opportunity. If the market were to drop, then IWM would probably be the first one to give low risk short entry opportunity. However, overall the broad market ETFs show a strongly bullish market. That same conclusion is arrived at from sector and industry analysis. Let us study that. Every week we study 11 economic sector performance across three review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week prior to red bar. And blue bar performance of two weeks prior to green bar. Together they constitute performance of four weeks or about one month period. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up and line going to the left of zero point shows the sector decline. This week, eight of the 11 sectors gained and they gained considerably. This paints an undoubtedly 
bullish picture. The red bars are quite strong on the right hand side. On the left hand side also they are strong but relatively less than the sectors that went up. However, six of these sectors flip-flopped between gain and loss over last two weeks. These are utilities which was positive last week. This week it declined. Real estate was positive last week. This week declined. Information technology was at loss last week. This week strongly went up. Healthcare declined last week. This week strongly went up. Financials reduced last week. This week it went up. Consumer discretionary reduced last week. This week it went up. When six of the sectors flip flop, it probably shows that the market is trying to decide where to put more money and which sectors not to put any money. We will see the same flip-flop in action when we drill down into the underlying industries. When such flip-flop happens, it becomes a little bit more difficult to identify low-risk swing long trade opportunity, at least trend-following trade opportunities. But it is not that such trades are not found, sometimes a particular week's weakness may give us buy the deep opportunity. Those opportunities also came this week, we'll review them when we go through the industries. Consumer discretionary is a sector where we saw warning signs for last three weeks. That vanished and the sector went up pretty strongly. However, we will see later that there are many industries that are flip-flopping. Though six sectors flip-flopped, four sectors, that is materials, industrials, energy and consumer staples, they remained steady for the whole month. All of them gained and gained quite considerably. As they were going up for the entire month, they might have given several profitable long trades, which could be identified both using Q top-down analysis, drilling down from Q edge, or using bottom-up analysis by running Q sonar on Metastock or on TradeStation. Let's drill down to the industries. The best performing industries went up by between about 6 to 9 percent. These are sizable gains for one week. Noticeably, other than three energy industries, every other industry flip-flopped between loss and gain in the last two weeks. This corroborates the flip-flop seen in the sectors. We saw energy sector didn't flip-flop. It was steadily going up for the entire month. Three of its industries, oil and gas equipment and services, energy equipment and services, and oil and gas drilling. They went up again by quite a big percentage. And all the other industries that went up were losing industries just one week ago. So that shows quite a lot of flip-flop going on in the market. Auto industries dominated the gaining industries. Four auto industries went up sharply. These are automotive retail, auto parts and equipment, auto components and automobile manufacturers. You may Keep an eye on these industries and see if there is any low risk entry opportunity. So we have a lot of flip flop in the best performing industries. What about the worst performing industries? Worst performing industries went down by between about 
2.2 to 4.6 percentage. Relatively muted declines relative to the gaining industries. Interestingly, all of the 10 worst performers flip-flopped. That is the ones that are worst performing industries this week. All of them were gainers in the previous week. This corroborates again the turn around in the sectors. Many of them flip-flopped and shows that market is probably struggling to decide where to put the money. When all the worst performing industries were gaining industries just one week ago, market is taking time to decide where to go. Five of the decliners are in real estate. These are industrial rates, healthcare rates, office rates, residential rates and diversified rates. This is a sharp turn around from previous week when many of the rates were gaining. In total, in the USA market, there are 11 real estate industries. Nine of them actually reversed this week. On average, this week's loss is about double the gain of the previous week. This week, the average loss of all the real estate industries is 1.3% whereas in the previous week when the real estate sector went up strongly the average gain was 0.7%. This may lure some retail traders into taking short trade in these industries. However, not for Q traders because from Q age industry heat map, we clearly see that these industries are down for too long to take any optimal short trade. In fact, some of the fundamentally strong rate stocks that we identified in earlier market roundups, CBL is one of them. It has a strong vital score. So far, it is holding on to its daily chart base. Therefore, if the industry goes up next week, stocks like CBL may give very low risk entry opportunity. Let's have a look at CBL's fundamental and also its technical chart. In QVital, that is our tool for fundamental and peer analysis using visual tools. We can type the symbol and compare it with its peers. We can choose industry. In this case, I'm choosing industry plus. So it will look for stocks not only in CBL's identical industry, but also into related industries. You can click the retrieve peers button. This goes to Thomson Reuters and retrieves the peers of CBL. We can see CBL has earnings on 8th February. That is more than a month away. So it is safe to take a trade in CBL without worrying for earnings volatility. What attracted me to CBL when I discussed it in previous market roundups was its dividend yield percentage a very high dividend yield percentage of 14%. It has retrieved multiple stocks, in fact 68 of them. We click the calculator button to retrieve data on all of these 68 stocks and calculate vital statistics. It has completed the calculation instantly from color coding. We can see that CBL has the best possible valuation score, both for relative valuation as well as for internal valuation. We usually don't need to look at the score, just the color coding is enough. So CBL with the cyan color is clearly one of the strongest in terms of valuation. It has a very large dividend. 
on Friday it went up earnings is on 8th February it has strong earnings quality score meaning that earnings from quarter to quarter has a tendency to repeat itself there is also another factor that favors a long trade that is a high short squeeze score telling us that if CBL goes up the significant short holders will need to start covering and that may fuel the rally further. In terms of fundamentals, CBL has many things going for it for taking a long trade. Let's look at its technical charts. In the weekly backdrop chart, CBL dropped a lot. The sector as a whole and also CBL's industry in particular, both of them decline. So it is normal that the stocks will also go down along with the sector and industry. However, since October last year, it is creating a base. First, the backdrop candle color changed from magenta, that is bearish, to yellow, neutral. And then for last three weeks, the weekly candle color has changed to bullish color that is cyan all the recent weekly candles has upper tail that is showing that people are trying to buy it however not able to buy aggressively enough to push it higher and close at the high of the week price is coming down however though price is coming down the bullishness of the weekly color hasn't changed it is remaining cyan in daily it shows that the last significant drop was related to earnings earnings was negative and earnings was worse than previous week however after that earnings drop it has not declined anymore it is creating a nice base at the right edge, CBL is supported by this automatically drawn smart trend line, memory trend line. It is moving in a narrow sideways range. If price were to break out of the range, it might give us a very low risk entry opportunity, not only for swing trading, but also for long term investing. That would be a breakout trade. Usually I am not fond of breakout trades unless the breakout gives me a low risk entry opportunity. Here it may give us a low risk opportunity if it breaks out. The other approach that I sometimes follow when I see a stock creating a base for many months is try to buy it at the very low point. Following that strategy, somebody could buy the stock maybe on Friday itself. Put stop just below recent low, especially for swing traders. So this is the kind of stock I would like to buy in my retirement account, where it gives me substantial return, percentage return. And if it goes up, the dividend yield percentage will come down. However, I will make profit from the stock's price moving up. Let's go back to industry analysis. Continuing with the worst performing industries, coal and consumable fuels. It is the worst performer this week. Went down by about 6.5 percentage. For last couple of weeks, it was going up strongly. In the last market roundup, the videos are in the YouTube channel, I had warned against taking any new buy position. I did that because the industry was already up for long time. We could see that from the QH industry heat map. It declined this week. I drilled down using QH and saw that there is no short setup. 
and the industry's drop was largely due to the drop in one stock CEIX which dropped by 10.5%. When we see an industry like that, I stay away from taking new long trade and put protective stop on any long position that I may have. It is not weak enough to take any short trade right now. Every week other than the best and worst performing industries, we also study the accelerating industries. Often they end up being the best performer in subsequent weeks. Five of the accelerating industries are in consumer discretionary. If we look at the industry strength heat map, then we see that these are alternating between cyan and magenta, again showing that market is yet to decide on a clear direction. So we may be careful before taking any trade in these industries. Made in industry went up, accelerated this way. In last round up, I mentioned Marine may give buy the dip opportunities. Remember last week, Marine industries went down little bit. However, from Q edge, I saw it was down for a long time. Several stocks went up and then dipped a little bit. So I was looking for buy the dip opportunities based on that analysis and this stock. Star Bulk Carriers SBLK went up by more than 9% this week. It had given a trend following long setup before this move. Specifically, we discussed these two stocks also C SPAN SSW and Kirby Cop KEX. Both of them in the marine industry. I was looking for long opportunity by the deep opportunity in these two stocks. They also went up by more than 3% this week. Let's look at these three stocks SBLK, SSW and KEX using Q charts. That will show us how using the go with flow setup we can try to enter a long at the swing low. In the weekly chart, SBLK has cyan bullish color candle for many weeks. In daily chart, it went to the upper boundary, created higher high, pulled back little bit, came to value area and gave us a cyan color candle, creating a higher low. So this cyan color candle was the signal to take a go with flow trend following long trade opportunity. The entry could be at the close of that day, stop would be just below recent low, profit target would be upper boundary that was easily hit. Because the industry didn't weaken much, it came back up again this way, therefore it would be fine to exit partial position and hold on to the remaining position trying to let profit run. SBLK went up strongly this week, gave us a very profitable swing long trade opportunity and similar long opportunities were also there in SSW and KEX. In weekly chart, C-SPAN declined a lot but it was creating a very nice base. Its weekly backdrop candle color turned bullish cyan for three weeks now. I had discussed it when it broke outside the narrow range, created a higher high. At that point, in previous market roundup, I mentioned that if it pulls back, and goes up, it may give us a low risk entry opportunity. Here price didn't pull back much, it pulled back just little bit below the upper boundary lines. So one could take this trade only if 
one was following the stock for a while and was also aware of the strength in the underlying marine industry. Using that insight, one could take a long trade on this day, probably using real-time fine-tuned chart so the entry price will not be at the close of the day but somewhere in the lower half. Stop would be just below the swing low. For swing traders, partial profit could be booked at this memory resistance line which is also the level of the declining white direction line. I see there is memory resistance in the weekly also. If the daily and the weekly memory resistance lines are broken, this stock has a potential to go up much further, especially if the industry continues to strengthen. What about KEX? KEX looks stronger than C-SPAN. It didn't decline so much in the weekly chart. For last three weeks, the backdrop candle color is already bullish. It also went to the upper boundary in daily chart, pulled back little bit and on Thursday went up again giving us a cyan color candle. If we were using Q sonar, we could see this go with flow setup in real time, maybe in the morning half itself and take a trade just as it was going above the upper boundary. Let's look at the fine-tuned real-time chart using 5-minute interval to see if such an entry opportunity was indeed there or not on Thursday. This is Thursday's opening price shown by the blue color line. Soon after market opened, it created the early range high and the early range low lines. We were already looking for a potential long trade in this stock because of our analysis of the industry and the stock itself. So we could take the long trade using early range breakout technique. It broke out of early range high on this candle. So we could take a long precisely at this level. And then it continued to go up for the day. So our entry price using real-time fine-tune chart will not be the closing price of the day but this price level which is significantly lower than entering it at the end of the day. So it did indeed give us a lower risk and therefore higher profit entry opportunity on KEX on Thursday. The study of the marine industry stocks show that by studying Q edge industry rotation, we can be ready to enter trades and enter it more confidently when the technical charts give us optimal buy point. There is another interesting stock in tires and rubber industry, Goodyear. GT, it is optimally valued and it is on the verge of breaking out of daily triangle pattern. Let's start with Q edge, look at tire and rubber industry that accelerated, drill down to its stocks, identify GT as one having optimal valuation and then finally look at its technical chart. Every time we open Q edge, it analyzes 11 sectors and more than 170 industries across 12 monthly review periods and more frequently for recent periods, 10 days, 5 days, 2 days and finally 1 day in real time. It assigns a large number to the best performing item. 1. 
to the worst performing item and also applies a heat map cyan to the strongest one magenta to the weakest one color gradient to all the ones in between the result is a scoring and heat map table that instantly tells us over five days period that is our primary period for deciding trade entry both for swing trading and long-term investment entry over that primary interval which one is the strongest now information technology which one is weakest utilities and it also shows which ones are weak for long time utilities which ones are strong for long time information technology and which ones may be changing color energy though over five days it is quite strong over two days and over one day it scored declined rapidly if we look at the industries we see advertising was weak for long time However, over two days and one day period, its score jumped up. We may still wait for the primary five days period score to turn cyan. We came to study the tire and rubber industry. We can go to the industry analysis tab, filter for tire. Yes. We can see that the industry was weak magenta for long time. Over M2 two month period, it tried to strengthen but weakened again. Over five days period, it accelerated. That shows up as the cyan color pace over five days period. So that caught my interest. I am always looking for industries that are weak and turning up or that are strong and turning down so this could be one that was weak for a long time and turning up the five days score is not sign yet but it is accelerating faster than others so i can click this button to drill down qa will go to thompson writers and Retrieve stocks belonging to the tires and rubber industry. Two stocks found. And click the calculator button to retrieve data of these stocks and calculate these vital statistics. We see GT good year is one of them. It's retrieving data of the two stocks. Once the data is retrieved instantly using the color coding, we can see that Goodyear is optimally valued that is have very good valuation both for relative valuation score and internal valuation score its earnings is on 6th february it's about one month away so we can safely take even swing trades without worrying about earnings volatility looking at the optimal valuation and that the industry is accelerating, I looked at its technical charts. In the weekly chart, at this point, it created a false downside breakout. Let me change the weekly template so we can see the watermark support levels. This low of Goodyear tires in the weekly chart created a watermark support level after the earnings it tried to go below that support but immediately reversed so we call this false downside breakouts they give us very low risk entry opportunity if somebody was keeping an eye on that which probably happened somewhere here in the daily chart probably on this cyan candle one could take a long trade Let me in the daily chart also change the template so I can see the watermark support levels. We can now see clearly that Goodyear tries to go below this watermark support 
then displayed the bull release signal it was accompanied with heavy activity so that met all the conditions of a box long trade setup using the unambiguous checklist that we have we could safely take the trade on this candle when it closed above the support line that was a false breakout so the entry price would be close of this candle stop would be just below recent low and as price went up once the risk distance was covered which happened by the time price came to the yellow direction line partial profit for swing traders could be booked at the right edge it is near memory resistance both in daily and weekly the weekly chart is clearly bullish both in terms of color cyan and shape the candle with long lower tail and hollow body in daily it created a higher high pull back on thursday gave a cyan colored candle that could technically be taken as a signal for entering trend following long trend except for the fact that the memory resistance line is nearby so i hesitated to take a long trade when the memory resistance is there one approach could be to see if next week price opens just above the memory resistance and continues to go up from there if it does that then using fine tune real time 5 minute chart we can take a very low risk entry another possibility could be that price tries to open higher then comes down little bit we are observing it using real time 5 minute chart hits the memory line precisely goes up from there or hits this watermark line precisely goes up from there again using fine tune chart we can observe this and take a trade low risk entry in this stock and we will take that trade only if this industry tire and rubber industry is strengthening at the same time we can do that because q edge updates industry rotation information in real time not at end of day but in real time those were few interesting stocks in accelerating industries lastly we study the decelerating industries because often they tend to become worst performers in subsequent weeks sometimes they may also give us by the deep opportunity we can infer that by studying the industry heat map in more detail the decelerating industries are spread across diverse sectors no one particular sector is prominent here construction materials it's score decelerated if you remember previous market roundups i actually identified a potential long opportunity in us concrete belonging to this industry when this industry was going up now it scored decline however it looks more like a by the deep opportunity the us concrete remember i <laughs> thought about possibility of the us border wall coming up not sure it will come up or not but anyway that trade that was discussed on 23rd december went up nicely and it is remaining bullish why we looked at uscr because that had the best valuation score in q vita i took a snapshot of the youtube recording of the market round up where i discussed us concrete this is how the chart looked at that time at that time us cr had created a higher high pulled back and gave us a cyan colored candle on that thursday 
and I mentioned that we could take a long trade at that point, put stop just below recent low. Technically, it was a sound trade. Profit target could be once the risk distance was covered or at the upper boundary. Why it was also a sound trade was because the industry was strengthening at that time. Let's look at this stock as of today. In weekly chart, US concrete is continuing to go up. The weekly backdrop candle color is bullish for three successive weeks. This week's candle color and shape both are bullish. I had identified the long opportunity on this cyan candle. Technically, it was meeting all the requirements of our go with flow setup. This would be the entry price stop just below recent low and this week it has covered more than risk distance. So partial profit for swing traders could be booked. The stock is continuing to be bullish but the industry decelerated. If somebody is seeing that the industry is decelerating, swing trader could book full profit. Another approach could be to book enough partial position with profit and put a stop using protection stop so that the entire trade is risk free. So one can take a chance at letting profit run. I will be happy to let profit run or try to let profit run when the industry is strengthening. In this case industry decelerated so this is not the best case for me to try to let profit run. However, if one decides to do that, then let's see where the stop could be using the protection signal. Our entry price was at this level and as the stock went up and we booked partial profit, currently it is showing that the trailing stock could be at this level which is approximately the same level of entry price. So we could easily book partial profit half for example and leave the rest of the position with a trailing stop almost like a break even stop. There is enough gap between closing price and the stop loss. So it will not be stopped out by a whipsaw and if the industry and the stocks continues to strengthen, we'll have a good chance at letting profit run. This protection signal, the stop loss levels work pretty well to let the profit run. It doesn't get stopped out easily at the same time it doesn't let profit erode in case the stock reverses. We looked at US concrete and how we could have a profitable trade in this stock by looking at the industry strength and also the fundamental and technical strength of the stock. Brewers, this industry decelerated this week. However, this was weak for long time. Its score decelerated, however, it recovered some ground on Thursday Friday. So for the whole week it decelerated but it recovered some ground on Thursday and Friday and that was very clear immediately visually from the QH. We'll have a look at that. That caught my attention and I drilled down and I found this stock tap Moisson Coors. I think they have the Coors brand of beers. The stock is optimally valued and it may give a value buy opportunity at a low risk buy point on the chart. Again, let's start with QH and drill down to look at TAP's fundamentals and finally look at its chart. In industry analysis, we can anytime click the magnifying glass to refresh the data. That is the investigate button. Search for brewers. If I open up the one day and two day scoring, we see that it was weak for long time, decelerated over five days. 
that is shown by the magenta color the weakness in the paste column however it gained score from 49 to 129 and then to 135 over two days and one day that showed up as cyan color paste over two days and one day these are interesting industries for me which were weak for a long time and showing some sign of reversal five days period is not cyan yet as i mentioned sometimes looking at two days and one day period score change we may try to catch the very bottom but we'll do that only in stocks that are fundamentally strong and also that are at a low risk technical buy point you can click the button to get the stocks it's retrieving the stocks from thomson reuters three stocks we can click calculator to retrieve data on these three stocks and calculate the vital statistics going to thomson reuters again and retrieving data about these stocks and calculating the vital statistics score other than the vital statistics that is shown here it does a lot more calculation the detail are in the vital analysis tab we have multiple panels the vital statistics itself then information panel performance panel fundamentals and revenue and eps growth panel all color coded but for most purposes we just use the vital statistics panel again using color coding instantly we can see that tap is the only one with cyan color for valuation so this is optimally valued pays a small dividend the best among the three stocks let's look at tap using technical charts in the weekly chart it created a beautiful false downside breakout when price tried to go below this watermark support level created a very bullish shape candle here that is when the false downside breakout was completed so we could start to look for long opportunities right from that point onward let me change the daily chart template to see the watermark level using the watermark the false downside breakout in daily happened on this yellow candle there was exhaustion at this point therefore using false breakout one could take a long trade right at this point put stop just below recent low and book partial profit when the risk distance was covered which happened when the price came to the declining yellow direction line if the industry was strengthening it would be an easy decision to let profit run on the remaining position or one could use trailing stock to do the same at the right edge there is a cyan color candle that is a potential trend following long signal day only concern is that there is a memory resistance in daily and there is also a memory resistance in weekly if such memory resistance lines are there i hesitate to take a long trade unless i am studying the stock and the industry regularly this looks like a possible candidate for buying a optimally valued stock fundamentally strong stock in an industry that may be turning around we saw that over last two days and one day period it scored strengthen if the industry continues to strengthen it's more likely that tap will break above the resistance and continue to go higher i usually wait for the breakout under such circumstances wait for a pull back and then take a long at the next swing low this is not a breakout that will give me a low risk entry therefore i wait for a swing low to form before trying to take that trade 
you may keep an eye on this stock. This stock is again meeting multiple bullish criteria. Fundamentals are strong. The industry is showing some sign of strength, at least over the last one and two days. And technical chart is also getting stronger. Brewers was an industry that was weak for a long time and strengthening. Seems to be strengthening. We have to wait for confirmation. Whereas home improvement retail is the opposite. This industry was strong for long time. And now it decelerated. Because it decelerated, if I have any long position, though should be pretty profitable by now, I am careful. I keep an eye on the industry heat map and score to see if it is going down or not. Currently it just decelerated. I drill down and I found this stock FND, Floor and Decor Holdings is one of the weakest in terms of fundamentals. Technically there is no short signal. If the industry continues to weaken, this being the fundamentally weakest may drop before others. So you may keep an eye on stocks like that. Let's look at QH and then look at the stock. Home Improvement Retail. This industry was cyan for long time. From one month to 12 month period. Over five days it decelerated. That showed up as magenta color on five days period. Over two days and one day it strengthened again. In any case, because it was strong for a long time and decelerated over the primary period, I had drilled down. This industry has some very strong stocks like Home Depot's, Lowe's. Those are still going up strongly. Let's look at the stocks. It has found six stocks. You can click the calculator button to retrieve data and calculate vital statistics. Instantly using color coding, we see there is no optimally valued stock. That is expected because the industry was going up for a long time. Everything is either magenta, that is overvalued, or medium valued. And FND has probably the worst valuation, both in terms of relative score and internal value score. So I looked at FND technical charts. In weekly, FND went up just as the industry was also going up. This week it created an indecisive candle. The candle color is neutral. The shape is indecisive. It has long lower tail but solid body. It in fact reversed from a high that was created earlier. So we can say it is kind of false upside breakout. In the daily chart that false upside breakout is showing up but it is still in uptrend with higher highs and higher lows and there is no bearish headwind signal. Therefore, there is no short trade opportunity. Why I mentioned this stock is because the industry decelerated after being strong outperformer for a long time and this being the weakest stock in that industry. If the industry continues to weaken, then probably this stock will be the first to drop. Therefore, if we have a long position, that must be pretty profitable now. At least for long term investors, it should be pretty profitable and we may use Q protection signal to apply protective stock. Those are the stocks and industry sectors I plan to discuss. Let's summarize. This was a week where everything seemed to go up. US oil went up, gold went up, and all the broad market ETFs also went up. Market breadth turned strongly bullish. Market indices went up. 
both for NASDAQ and NYSE. If there is at all any hesitation, that is because of the flip-flop, that is very apparent, not only in the sectors but in many industries. Remember, every industry that are worst performer this week actually gained last week. And several of the best performers of this week were losers in the previous week. We also saw from market internals that the market's rally is continuing to be fueled more by stocks that were already strong performers. We could see that because the new high lows are stronger than up down volumes and advanced declines. However, market no doubt is bullish. Last week I had seen some cautionary signs in terms of bearish headwind signals and also in terms of industry breadth reducing in strength. However, that vanished this way. As in the previous week also, there is no need to exit any long position. If any particular industry is showing weakness in Q edge, then we may use protective stop, but there is no need to exit any profitable position. And it is not easy to find a good short opportunity in this market. So we may wait for that patiently. That is all that I plan to share in this session. Thanks a lot for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.